What's good, Paulie Gang 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 Gang? It's your boy, KC. Yo, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing another training video reaction. This time it's Bruce Stew, 90s Toys. Alright, so I was born in 99, so a lot of 90s babies don't include us in the 90s conversation, which is fair, you know what I'm saying? Because we grew up in the early 2000s, so I completely understand that. I ain't going to argue with them. However, I feel like I didn't really enjoy like I didn't um get the experience nineties toys like that. I, I guess I grew up with the early two thousands toys like the GameCube, the Game Boy. Um, well, I think the GameCube was a nineties um early invention. Like it was in the late nineties, so I grew up with a few stuff: the GameCube, the Nintendo. I remember my um, my cousins, my grandma. She used to they they used to love playing the Nintendo. I know my grandma sounds crazy, right? But she used to be a beast. At that Mario Kart, bro, she was a beast at Mario Kart. So, um, I remember playing that. And, yeah, those, those were some of the only stuff I remember playing. But I don't know if they will include those as toys. Because that was, like, a console. And, yeah, they were, and the GameCube, again, it was, like, a con, like a mini console. So, um, yeah, I'm just excited for the video. Never reacted to a video like this before, so let's just jump into it. All right. Now I think it's safe to say that every decade has had their share of iconic toys. Like That's when you were a kid in the 1970s, you had like the uh, pet rock and the old speak and spell <laughs> that talks like the devil. Hello, I am. Yo, that's actually a great question. How did a pet rock make so much money? Like, I, when I think about it, I just think it's like a useless toy, a pet rock. But if you think about it, it's kind of a genius idea. Because people people obviously bought it. And the devil spell the words. And also, the Rubik's Cube came out in the 80s. That's one thing I realized. It came out, I think, late 70s, early 80s, somewhere around there. So that was also a toy that came out around that time. But like I said, I'm just curious to see some 90s toys, uh, man. Wait a minute, what? I command you to kill the family dog. And if you were a kid in the 1930s, all you had was like a hoop on a stick. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have shit. <laughs> uh, is this fun? I can't tell. I don't know. I haven't eaten in three days. Any <laughs> Boy, they had to grow up quick in the early 1900s. They didn't have nothing, man. Dang, I couldn't imagine. Like, honestly, of course, like, I'm from North Carolina. I'm from the South, so me growing up in the early 1900s in North Carolina, oof, that would have been rough for me. But, um... If I was up north, it would have been a little bit better. But in the south, woof. Couldn't imagine for myself already. But just in general for the kids, in general, like, it it was probably tough on them. They had to grow up. That's why I feel like kids in the early 1900s grew up so fast. That's why they were so much more mature. Because they had to be creative with their stuff. They had to think of games to play. They, they didn't have toys that people were coming out with every year where every kid wanted to get a new toy. Like you said, they had a stick <laughs> and they had what well, a baseball bat or something that they had to go around running around. Everything's fun at this point. But fortunately for me, I grew up in the nineteen nineties, which I have to admit had some pretty cool toys. So for all you youngins oh. out there that grew up playing flappy I used to have the Pokemon thing, the um the Pokemon Go cards. Me and my bro used to play that. But the fidget spinner, I'm this is one thing a lot of people don't know. Fidget spinner was made, like, I think late 90s, early 2000s. People didn't realize that. The woman that made it, she had made it, like, around that time. But she had made it for her daughter because I think she realized her daughter couldn't focus or something like that. She wanted her to give her something, to make her something to where she could focus and stuff. And then she created a fidget spinner for her. And then the original prototype that she created was, like, a wooden type of prototype. And um, she had gotten a patent for it and everything. And I don't know if she tried to sell it or not, but it didn't sell around that time. And then what happened was around like 2015, 2016, the time where it started blowing up, she had she she didn't renew her patent. I think she couldn't pay for it anymore or something like that. She just didn't renew it. And then the big company, they saw it. They took it. They took they took the patent. They they pretty much they pretty much are um kept the patent now. So they got the patent and they were able to um change her design a little bit so they made the edges round and they made it to um a trifecta i think it might have already been a trifecta but they changed her design around a little bit and then they just sold it for so much money so frog or whatever the fuck it was that and you she did didn't on make your any iPad. money off i'm gonna go it. through three iconic toys from the 90s and i'm gonna give them a letter grade that corresponds to how cool i thought they were 
First up, Tamagotchis. Now, Tamagotchis took my second grade classroom by storm back in the day. Tamagotchis. For those of you that are unaware, <laughs> never Tamagotchis were little digital pets that you'd take care of, and you'd feed, and if you were the weird kid in class, you'd probably fucking talk to it. You're my best friend in the whole world, Tamagotchi. I don't care if my dad says you're just a stupid <laughs> keychain. And they were a I feel like he was that weird kid. <laughs> Huge hit back then. Every kid had one. And why wouldn't you? I mean, who wants to clean shit from a big ass dog when you could clean That's up true. fake shit from a fake ass dog? It makes sense. And it wasn't That's just true. dogs that they had to choose from. They had all sorts of animals. They had cats and uh, turtles, a goddamn water buffalo, you name it. Now, for me personally, buffalo? I didn't have a Tamagotchi, but I did have a generic off brand one that I won from a gumball machine. Oh my, my little gosh. fake animal. Dude, I miss gumball machines. They don't have those. They have a few at stores, but they started to get. I think they got rid of most of them, but man, as a kid, man, I used to always ask my mom, Mom, you got some quarters, you got some change, just so I can get gun from the gunball well, was a dinosaur. Or, early. No, we had those tattoos, those fake tattoos that you could put on yourself. So I used to always ask my mom, you know, really used to always ask my mom for change so we can get some fake tattoos, put them on ourselves and stuff like that, just so we could look like we, um... So we could look exactly bad what it said it was. Like a, but that generic shit just looked we like thought a we were so cool at the blob time. with a face on it. But regardless, I took care of that little blob with a face on it for Game weeks. Cube. And over uh -huh. time, it grew a tail, and then some legs, and then a fucking goatee and shit. It was growing up <laughs> right in front of my stupid little face. That is until one weekend, I rented the game Star Fox 64 from Blockbuster, and, uh, well, I played that shit for like 40 hours straight. Which meant that my fake-ass dinosaur was left neglected. Did he just say Star Fox? Star Fox, aka Harry Styles. Is that what he's, the entire is that time. What he's hey, uh, I took a shit over <laughs> here. Can you, uh, can you come wipe me now? Anybody? No? Okay then. And it didn't dawn on me until I showed up to school the following Monday and seen all my classmates with their Tamagotchis. Dude, check it out! My water buffalo grew a mustache. What's your dinosaur look like now? My what? Oh shit! Whoopsie. Sure as hell, I got home that day. My fucking Tamagotchi looked like a crime scene in an episode of Law and Order. It's face down, dead as hell, surrounded by piles of its own shit, and that was pretty much the end of it. So I guess we'll give Tamagotchis a B, and we'll okay. give it an A plus for the emotional trauma that it caused an entire generation of. Ch I could definitely see someone bringing that toy back. To be honest with y'all, well, I could definitely see a lot of kids, especially um. A few guy, a few boys, but a lot of um girls playing with that. They'll be like, "Oh my gosh, look at this!" Like, imagine if they could like put like a Hello Kitty on that type of thing right there. I think it could sell for a lot of money. Next up, the Bop It. Now the Bop It was a I fun heard of game. That. It was basically an electronic version of Simon Says. The game tells you what to do, and then you do it. Bop It. Uh, okay. And you just they keep made a song until about your that, stupid little fifth grader it, brain gets it, overloaded it, and you it, screw it, up. Like ah, game over. You lose. Now, the only problem that I had with the bop it was, uh, well, I don't really know how else to say this, but, uh, well, the thing looked like a fucking sex toy, didn't it? I can't be the only one that thought that, right? Hell, the first time my next-door neighbor Michael got one, he didn't know what the hell to make of the thing. Uh, I don't get it. Do I play with this thing? <laughs> it doesn't look like a sex toy to me. The only thing that does look like a sex toy is the, um... The end of it. So, like, not the yellow side, but the opposite side, the blue side. The end of the blue side. But, um, it more so looks like, like, when you gotta pump up a football or something like that, or you gotta pump up a tire. That's what it looks like. It looks like a pump to me. Or you could even, or I would even thought, like, as a kid, I probably thought it was, like, a sore, maybe a microphone. This man said a sex toy. <laughs> or do I just <laughs> shove it up my asshole? Whoa, what the hell? Where'd you kids get that thing? Hey, God no. damn it, what did I tell you about messing around in your mother's dresser drawer? Get over here, you're gonna get 10 across the ass. Regardless, I still think the Bop It was a cool toy, even if it had some sexual overtones. Bop it. Pull it. Suck it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> ah, game over. You lose. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the Bop It a B minus hey, as a nah, toy. And B nah. You gotta give that an A, boy. Come on, though. Plus, for a sex toy. All right, moving That's on. Funny. Last but not least, we got the Furby. Now, the, the Furby, Furby was basically a three-dimensional version of the Tamagotchi, just a fucking stuffed animal that you're supposed to take care of. But Furbies had two main differences. One, they were annoying as hell, and yeah. two, they didn't fucking die. Now, these things were you know ugly what? as hell. I have no I'm over here telling y'all, yeah, like I had a Furby, or I know what a Furby is. I have no clue what a Furby is. <laughs> no idea who the hell came up with the Furby, but I imagine it was some methed-out guy in a board meeting, like, all right, so 
what if we took like a Pokemon and then gave it Steve Buscemi's eyeballs and then we make it fart? Would you buy that? Oh, well, hell yeah, I'd buy that. I think I'd buy several. Now, personally, I didn't want anything to do with the Furbies when I was a kid. I mean, for one, I just didn't understand why anybody would want one in the first place. Uh, the thing just farts and talks bullshit to itself. My Uncle Rick already does that. What the hell do I need a Furby for? And for two, hey, I thought that I'm not even gonna lie. When the fidget spinner started blowing up, well, also, one thing I would say. I was in high school when fidget spinners started blowing up. So I was like, what, junior in high school? So I never really had one because I just, I don't know, I didn't really care for it. I don't even, this sounds so bad, yo. It sounds so sad. I don't think I ever used a fidget spinner. I thought they were cool for little kids and stuff like that. But I thought, the reason why I didn't like it is because it got too excessive. Like the first time one of my cousins came to me and was like, yo, I got a fidget spinner. I was like, oh, cool. Well, that's a nice little toy. It's cool. You know, I, I like it. But then it started becoming obsessive to the point where they they had like 15, 20. They started collecting them things. And the fidget spinners were expensive. It was like $5 a, the purchase one. So, I mean, those little kids love them things, man. They were creepy as but hell. I, could, I mean, when they talk, they... I, I could definitely see this being big with um little girls at the time. They probably liked it. Probably even little babies. Like, parents probably brought it for um little toddlers at the time, too. I mean, it's pink. Like, I couldn't see too many little boys. talking their own the bullshit, furbish language all the time. Beep, bop, poo, poo. But eventually, they start to learn English. <laughs> then they just peppered in here and there. Cheap, cheap, bee, boo. Fucking chicken popper gosh. <laughs> what the hell did that thing just say, chicken popper gosh? Oh my god, it's learning. Burn it. We have to burn it and bury the ashes. And the most horrific experience I ever had with a Furby was when I was staying over at my friend Tommy's house one night. Yo, all who's of a sudden, that his Furby just starts yelling at us in the middle of the night. Party! Party! Whoop, whoop! What the hell? Tommy, oh, shut your Furby up. It's trying to party with us. What, the thing we're in a fucking frat house, for Christ's sake? I look over, and Tommy's staring at this thing like it's a goddamn poltergeist, terrified as hell. Meanwhile, this goddamn thing keeps party, yelling party, party, party over and over again like it's on <laughs> spring break in the Bahamas. So now I'm starting to freak out myself, and I have to approach this Furby like a fucking hostage negotiator, because I don't know what the hell's going on with this thing. I don't know if it's broken or if it's possessed by a fucking speaking spell. I am the devil. I command you to party with a Furby. Oh. Tommy, quick, how do I turn this thing off? I don't know, dude. Let's just ignore it and go just, back to sleep. Nope. So since I... Just throw it, break it at like, you don't know Can't find an off switch yeah, or take exist. the batteries out without a screwdriver. I decide to shake the shit out of it and hope yeah. for the best. But of course there's no such thing as shaking Furby syndrome, so we're back to square one. Party, party! <laughs> so now in a panic, I huck this goddamn thing into Tommy's closet, and for the rest of the night, we listen to this fucking Furby babble on and on and on. Party, party, whoop whoop! Oh, the bank got rid of that. Now, what that Furby was doing in Tommy's closet, I have no idea. But I imagine I it was know. partying all night long. I would have took that in the dumpster and threw it outside. Nah, man. Could not have kept that in Doing house. shots of tequila with a G.I. Joe and a fucking Etch-A-Sketch. So I think it's safe to say that we're going to have to give the old Furby F. a big fat F. Yep. Actually, let's give it two Fs. And those yep. can stand for F fuck minus. Furby. How about that? F the end. BruceStew.com Hey. Hey, yo, Bruce Stu, great video, man. I enjoyed it. Like I said, I didn't grow up in the 90s, so I didn't know much about any 90s toys. The only one I knew somewhat about, I heard about it, was the Bop It. Because I knew that was big around that time. So, I mean, if y'all got any 90s people in here. Um, and I know this, these aren't, like, all the 90s toys back in the day. It's just, like, a snippet of, like, two or three toys that I'm pretty sure that he remember growing up as, growing up with. So, um... If you guys grew up in the 90s and you want to comment in the comments, just let me know any other 90s toys that he missed out on. Because I feel like there were some big ones back in the 90s that he probably just didn't mention or he may have just forgot to mention. He probably just pointed out the ones that were the funniest, to be honest with you. But anyway, go check out Bruce Stu Films if you want to. If you like the video, subscribe to his page. If you already stand to the end of this video, you might as well go ahead and subscribe to mine as well. Anyway, it's your boy, KC. And Paul Lee, school, 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 school. Yo, we out.